Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is number 56 IGCSE exam questions, and it is functions. And if you do find it useful, please do like the video. Let's get into it. Functions are tricky. Let's do it. Okay, um, we have uh, first off, find f of 1. Easy peasy. Just sub it in. So it is 1 minus 4 and then squared. So it is 9. State the range of f of x. Mm, bit trickier that. The range of f of x. Well, this is this is a perfect square. And what do we know about squares? You they'll never be negative. You can't get a negative number after you've squared um, your input. So therefore, the range is that f of x will always be greater than or equal to zero. Again, if you're you, what you could do is you could sketch the graph and it would look like this. It will be a quadratic and it will never go below zero. Okay, next question. We're asked to work out um, f of g of 2. So when I do f of g of 2, I take 2 and I put it into g and then I take the answer to that and put it into f. So the first thing I'll do is put 2 into g, so g of 2. And I'll go to my calculator, I'll do 4 over 2 plus 3, which is 4 fifths. And then I'll take that 4 fifths and I'll put that into f. And remind ourselves what f is. f is to um, take that previous answer, minus 4, and then square. So I get 10.24. Okay, next question that says find f of minus 7. Uh, so again, I'll go to my calculator. I'll do 3 times minus 7, and then minus 5, and then all over 4. And we will get minus 6.5. And now I've got to find the inverse function. So I do that by setting the function equal to y. And then I do an xy swap, which means I take any x and I swap it with any y. So all my x's will turn to y's and all my y's will turn to x's. So this becomes x is equal to 3y minus 5 over 4. And then all I need to do now is to make y the new subject of this equation. So I'll times both sides by 4. I'll add 5 to both sides. And then finally I will divide through by 3. And once we have y equals, then we can say that the inverse function is, in this case, 4x plus 5 over 3. Okay, next one says the function g, um, sorry, the function g is such that g of x is equal to 19 minus x, find f of g of 3. So again, to find f of g of 3, I will take 3 and I will put it into g, and then I'll put the answer into f. So putting 3 into g, so g of 3 will be the square root of 19 minus 3, which is the square root of 16, which is 4. And then I need to put 4 into f. i just remind myself what that was. It was 3x minus 5 over 4. So 3 times 4 minus 5 over 4. It goes into our calculator. Oh, I can just change it here, actually. I'm not, I can just sub in 4. And it gives me 7 over 4. Perfect. It says, which values of x cannot be included in the domain of g? Well, there's two things that you can't do. You can't divide by 0, and you can't square root a negative. In this case, we're not going to be dividing, but we are going to be square rooting, and we can't square root a negative. So therefore, this... Um, um, 19 minus x must be greater than 0. 
uh, so this must be positive. So the ones that I want, uh, which cannot be included, are the values of x which make this negative. So adding x to both sides tells me that x cannot be greater than 19. OK, next question. And we're using the other um, thing you can't do, which is you can't divide by 0. So state which value of x must be excluded. Well, what I can't have is x is the denominator equal to 0, because that means I'll be dividing by 0. So 4x would equal to 3. So x equaling 3 over 4 is not allowed. Now it says find f of g of x. So that means I take x and I put it into g. Well, great, that gives me this. And then I put that into f. So I write out my f, but I replace every x with g, which is x minus 5. So I'll write x minus 5 instead of x over 4 lots of x minus 5 instead of x and then minus 3. It asked me to simplify my answer so I probably should expand the brackets which gives me 4x minus 20 minus 3 so that gives me 4x minus 23. Great. Oh, and part C says find the inverse of f. So I will take my f of x and I'll set it equal to y. And that was x over 4x minus 3. Just double check that. Yep. And I will do an xy swap. So any y's will turn into x's and any x's will turn into y's. Now this one's slightly trickier because to make y the subject it occurs twice so we're going to have to factorize at some point. I'm going to multiply by the denominator to get x 4y minus 3 equals y. Expand the left hand side so I get 4xy minus 3x equals y. And I'm going to collect um, the terms that have a y in it on the left hand side and the terms that don't will go to the right hand side. So my left hand side becomes 4xy minus y, because I'm going to have to minus that to this side, and then I'm going to take that and I'm going to plus it to that side, so plus 3x. I then can factorize out a y, and this will give me 4x minus 1, and then I can divide through to get my inverse function in terms of x. So it's 3x over 4x minus 1. Okay, tricky question alert. We have um, two functions, f and g, and it tells me that h is f of g, which means I need to take g and put it into f. So I'm going to write out that um, f of uh, g of x is equal to I write out f, but instead of writing x, I will instead input g, which is x plus 3. So it's x plus 3 squared minus, and again, instead of x here, I write x plus 3. So it's two lots of x plus 3. And then it's asked us to work out the inverse function of this. And I'm going to label this h of x. And in order to work out the inverse of a quadratic, I'm going to have to write it in completed square form. So I'm going to expand these brackets first. The first bracket is going to give me x squared, and then plus a 3x, and then plus another 3x is 6x plus 9. And then expanding these brackets, I'm going to get minus 2x and minus 6. So this is going to simplify to x squared plus 4x plus 3. And in order, again, like I said before, um, in order to um, find the inverse function of a quadratic, you've got to complete the square. 
So I get x plus 2 all squared minus 2 squared plus 3. And this is going to give us, and also if you don't know how to complete the square, then you should watch the video where I go through completing the square. And this gives me minus 4 plus 3. So this gives me x plus 2 all squared minus 1. Okay, great. So in order to find the inverse function, I set it equal to y. And then I do a swap a -roo. I swap the x's for the y's. So this becomes x is equal to y plus 2 all squared minus 1. And then I make y the subject. So I do that by adding 1 to both sides. Square rooting both sides. And when I square root, I get plus or minus. And this will cancel with the squared on that side. And then I'm minus 2 from both sides. So I'll write minus 2 plus or minus the square root of x plus 1 is equal to 9. Uh, equal to y, sorry. Okay, you think you might be done there. You've done a lot of work and you think you've got it right. But we have to look at this condition here. The x has always got to be greater than or equal to minus 2. And that's for the function h of x. So for the inverse function, we swap the x's and the y's. So y must be greater than or equal to minus 2 for the inverse function. Now at the moment, we've got here that y is equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of x plus 1. And for y to be greater than or equal to minus 2, I'm going to have to add on this square root bracket, not take it away because that will make it less than minus 2. So in fact, I'll need to cross this out and replace it with just a plus. And that is my final answer. Uh, well, actually, no, it's not. I should write h to the minus 1 of x is equal to this. There we go. Perfect. OK, here we go. Tricky question. Really tricky one. And if you can master this one, then you've got functions absolutely sorted. Right, it starts off. You've got this horrible looking function. And then it says, find the value of p for which the inverse function of p is equal to k. Now, you're not going to want to try and find the inverse function of this. Instead, you're going to use this really neat trick. And that is that if f of x gives you a value of y, then it means the inverse function will go backwards and you swap x's for y's. So here we have the inverse function of p is equal to k, which means that the original function, if I were to sub in k, it would give me p. OK, so let's solve this instead. That's going to be much easier. So sub in k. Subbing in k for x is going to give me k squared plus k squared, all square rooted, over k. And we're told that's equal to um, p, which is great because p is what I'm trying to find anyway. Um, this is going to give me the square root of 2k squared over k. And a square root like this, when I have two things multiplied together, I can split it up to write the square root of root 2 multiplied by the square root of k squared. And that's going to be helpful because we have the square root of 2 and the square root of k squared is just k. And our k's will cancel, so we have that p is root 2. Okay, second part of the question says that um, g is defined as g of x is equal to x squared. And it says, given that g of f of a is equal to k, find the expression of a in terms of k. So I need to put um, uh, a into f and then f into g. So putting a into f will give me the square root of 
a squared plus k squared over a. And then if I put that into g, well, that just means to square, essentially, your input. So I will square all of that, and that is equal to k. OK, right, when I square a fraction, I can square the numerator separately and the denominator separately. So squaring the numerator is going to remove that square root sign. And squaring the denominator is going to give me a squared. Now, I want an expression for a, so I'm going to have to collect all the a's on one side and then factorize. So first off, I will multiply both sides by a squared to get this. And then all the terms that have an a in it, I'll put on the left side. And all the terms that... that no, actually, I'll, I'll put all the um, a squares onto the right side. That'll be easier because it means I just have to move that 1a squared over. So I get k squared is equal to a squared k minus a squared. And then I will factorize an a squared, which gives me k minus 1. And then I will divide both sides by that factor of k minus 1. And then the last step is to square root. So it will be the square root of k squared over k minus 1. Okay, some real tricky questions in there. Well done for making it through to the end. Uh, if you did find that useful, please do like the video and then have a look at the next topic in the series. Bye for now.